Florida State has one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country at the top of their depth chart in 2023. They are going to do special things with Jordan Travis at the helm. But who is going to win that backup spot between Tate Rodemaker, A.J. Duffy, or Brock Glenn? Well, today I'm going to tell you how the guys looked in the scrimmage. I'm going to share their stats, which nobody else has. And I'm going to tell you who's leading that battle toward the end of the video. So make sure you stick around. I have a detailed play-by-play -play of the scrimmage. I was getting live play-by-play -play results from our eyes and ears inside the scrimmage last Saturday. I've compiled the stats from there. They are rough stats. Obviously, these are not official yard mark stats, but they give you a pretty good idea. I have more for the running backs and wide receivers and some defenders as well. If you want those, I will be sharing them with our Patreons so you can get that by becoming a channel member um, and joining the Discord. So hit the join button below if you want access to those exclusive insights and perks, really not only today, but all year long. Before we get started, do me a quick favor and comment below with who you think wins that QB2 job. Now, you don't have to do it right now. You can listen to the video if you wanted the insight and want an informed decision, but we will pick one winner that comments below and gets it right if you correctly predict who QB2 is for that LSU game. Not who gets the most reps in the next scrimmage, not who starts fall camp. Who is QB2 going into the LSU game? We'll pick one winner and get you a, a gift card from either Garnet Gold or Gramco. We'll let you pick uh, and get you hooked up there. Let's look at the stats from the scrimmage. We'll start with Tay Rotemaker, who obviously a lot of people probably would say started the spring as QB2. He went 10 for 15, so completed about two-thirds of his passes. Had 100 yards. Actually, what I came up with was about 101, but again, rough stats. Uh, no real rushing production. Did take a few sacks, as all of the quarterbacks did. The, the offensive line in there wasn't the best. Um, and then he had five completions that were five yards or less. So he had a lot of checkdowns. That's not a bad thing. He took what the best thing there available was, but it, it did really help his completion percentage, which was the best on the day. He, he had the best completion percentage, but he had completions of five, five, four, three, and two yards. Kind of inflate that uh, stat line just a bit. He also had two fumbled snaps, which, you know, are a little bit annoying and something that I think the the, the staff was, was not maybe a huge fan of. But there you can see there are Tate's stats uh, on the day. Okay, let's look at AJ. Uh, six for 12 passing, so uh, not as many attempts, but pretty close. I heard he took off running a little bit more. He had 90 yards, so a little bit better than... Um, than, than Tate did from a yards per completion standpoint. Had three touchdowns, so he was able to get the ball in the end zone quite often. Uh, did have two interceptions. One of them was on a jump ball that he probably forced a little too much. At 37 rushing yards is what I kind of came up with. Again, probably should have gone with like a 35 or a 30, uh, 40 there. But 37 rushing yards is about what I was uh, told. And he had two really, really bad drops um, that would have helped him even more, right? If, if this was at 8 of 12 and he had 120 yards, it have been really, really different. But I heard these two bad drops went, would have gone for about 30 yards. Um, so really, really could have been a, a phenomenal stat line as opposed to one that, you know, was, was not uh, kind of pedestrian when you look at 6 and 12. I think that, you know, in a live game situation, playing with all ones, you may have seen him be a little closer to that 8 of 12. Um, obviously, drops are drops, but I've heard these were just – really bad, like bread basket type drops, not like leaping catch type drops that, that he had to deal with. Then you look at Brock Glenn. Uh, he went five for 15, so not great, only about a third. He also had a couple of drops. Again, if, if you'd have moved his two drops up to make it seven to 15, probably a little bit more of what you're expecting there. Threw for about 50 yards though, so you're getting 10 yards of completion there. It wasn't just a lot of dump offs or, uh, you know, a lot short, game like like uh, maybe Tate's was. He did have a touchdown on a really nice throw. He had a couple of interceptions, and he also had some rushing yards. He went for about 30 rushing yards, not quite as mobile as AJ is, but did a pretty good job um, with that. And, you know, overall, you, you'd like him to be a little bit more accurate, but he's a freshman. We'll, we'll kind of explain some of that there. But those were the stat lines. That's kind of what we were looking at from a stat line perspective, and I think the guys did a pretty good job in the scrimmage there based on those stats. Okay, so those are our stats. Let's talk about how the guys actually looked, and then we'll get into who I'm hearing is impressing right now and might end up being QB2. 
Just before we do that, I wanna give some love to our friends over at the Sheepdog Corporation. We've told you guys about them in the past, but the Sheepdog Corporation provides mental health counseling and treatment to vets, active military, first responders. They work to break down the stigma surrounding PTSD and mental health in these communities. You can learn more about them by clicking the link above or in the description. It is thesheepdog.com. You want to give back and support the heroes in our community? Do what I have personally done and make a one-time or recurring monthly donation to them. If you have questions, you can email me at tj at doublefriesnoslaw.com. I'm happy to answer questions. I'd be happy for you to check out their website as well. You can get more details on everything that they're doing. These videos are completely free. So it's important that anything else that we promote, you guys are supporting, and none of them are more important than the folks who are providing mental health and PTSD treatment and counseling to our vets, active military, and first responders. As you guys know, when tragedy happens, a lot of times these are the heroes that step in and save lives. I would challenge each and every one of you to watch that are watching this video to at least go click on the sheepdogcorporation.com, click on the link, learn more about them. And if you are so compelled, maybe throw in five, 10 bucks a month to support the efforts and what they are doing. Appreciate the Sheepdog Corporation for all of their support and honestly for what they're doing in our communities. When it comes to how these QBs looked, I am hearing different things. Well, let's start from the top. Tate Rotomaker did not look super sharp. He held onto the ball a little too much at times and his passes were pretty off when they weren't checkdowns. We talked about this earlier. He had five completions for five yards or less. You take those away, he just didn't really throw the ball and complete it down the field with any kind of accuracy. Two completions came on really, really bad balls where the receiver just made a phenomenal play. Uh, he did have one really nice throw down the field to Jacobs for 35 yards. I heard he had one good drive, one really, really bad drive, and then the rest were just kind of average. I don't think he did anything to separate himself or distinguish himself much. Now it's just one scrimmage. This is not, you know, I'm not trying to get you to jump on the bash tape train or anything like that, but just not very good in this scrimmage. A um, couple of fumbled snaps that were really, really annoying. And I think the hope was when he put it together and he beat Louisville last year that he would continue to build on that and progress and grow there. And that just hasn't really been the case. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. A.J. Duffy did have a really good day. Uh, again, went about 50% on his passes, but those drops really killed him. Really should have been 7, 8 out of 10 or so. Um, made really good decisions. He did have the play of the day on a pass to Winston Wright. We'll show that highlight here in just a minute. And a couple of drops that, that would have made his day even more impressive. Brock Glenn looked really good, all things considered. Obviously, he's only been on campus for a couple of months. He does make true freshman type mistakes, but he does show glimpses. It's described to me as very, very confident. He's a lot like AJ was last year. You're going to get those freshman mistakes. You're going to get those true freshman mishaps. But there is something deeper there, and they can see that they really hit. Early returns, we're only a couple of months into him being on campus. Florida State feels like they hit in a big way on Brock Glenn. Here's what I'm hearing on the actual winner of QB2. If we were heading into the LSU game this week, if, if today was Wednesday of game week, and we were heading into that game, I think it'd be taked. He's been there before and he's done it before. He's proven it more often than not. We're only one scrimmage into this second year of A.J. Duffy and we're only one scrimmage in to Brock Glenn's career. But he's not been great in practice or in games since that Louisville game. Not that he's been terrible or awful and obviously JT13 gets most of the reps during the season, but he just hasn't built on that like we would have wanted him to after that Louisville game. If both Tate and AJ stay on the trajectory that they're on right now, I think AJ is going to work himself into that backup role by the start of this season. And there seems to be some confidence that that might be the case based on the folks that I'm talking with and the feedback they're giving me. This is far from a done deal, but AJ looks like he's taken a massive step forward and he may be rewarded with that backup job if he continues to improve. Glenn is also going to be really, really good, but he's really young and his play is a little too inconsistent for that just yet. But I do think that Glenn is going to be a really, really good quarterback for the Knowles. Now, what happens if AJ does win that job? Do others in the room look to transfer? I'm not sure just yet, but I have heard some things that I'll be sharing in our Discord server later this week. So if you want insight there, join the channel as a member so you can get access to that. Whoever ends up winning that backup job this year is going to have a leg up on the 2024 starting job when Jordan Travis is playing in the NFL. So it'll be huge for that person because the Florida State backup is going to get a lot of reps with how much Florida State is going to blow people out 
in 2023. You want to know how good that offense is going to be in 2023 and how much they're going to blow teams out? Do me a favor and click this link right here.